Hello everyone, this is Haley at Topaz Labs. I hope everyone is staying healthy and staying indoors. We are more excited than usual um, to do this webinar today um, to keep you entertained with some good quality education since we're all grounded right now and have lots of time to edit our photos. Um, so thank you for your patience also in registering for this webinar. Um, I actually read an article today that I think between March 23rd and 30th that 62 million people downloaded video conferencing products. So since all of our news anchors and teachers and professors and businesses and you know everyone's trying to find a way to work in this new landscape, I know GoToWebinar has been thoroughly overloaded. Um, so we've had to be patient with them and uh, <clears throat> but, but we figured out a way to go forward. So um, a couple things before we get started, if you're having issues, please make sure you've closed other applications that might be taking up a lot of memory on your computer. Um, and feel free to send me your questions. I'll try to get to as many as possible. Um, the more frequently asked ones, I'll send out um, a public response so you all can see those. Um, and I'll try to answer uh, everyone one-on-one. -on -one. Um, if I don't get to all of them, no worries. We'll have Joel's contact info and our Topaz support info at the end of this uh, session so you can reach out. Um, we'll also have some announcements at the end of our session, including a special discount code that you'll definitely want to take advantage of. Um, so, okay, um, I'd like to introduce Joel for those of you who have not had the opportunity to watch him present one of our webinars. Uh, I've gotten to know him quite well over the past year, and I'm really excited for what he's put together for us today. Joel loves teaching as much as shooting. He shares over 30 years of experience with photographers over all levels. Um, by way of his workshops, one-on-one -on -one trainings, webinars, articles, and speaking engagements. If you want to work with Joel in person, you can join him on one of his workshops uh, in the future. He conducts workshops in the U.S. and worldwide and offers private workshops and online interactive critiques of your work, which are perfect for this stay-at-home period. Uh, but for now, I'm going to turn it over to Joel. Joel, are you with us? I am. Hello, everybody. All right, let me switch it over for you. Uh, give me one second. There's a little bit of a delay on my end, so it may take just a moment. Let's see. And of course, uh, a security warning from my Mac. Give me one second, everybody. Well, I think we are all good at patience now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we definitely are. Our oh. quarantines here. Okay. Okay. Now I got the button to show my screen, and why don't you tell me when you see it? Okay, it's taking just a second on mine. Okay. Are you folks seeing my screen? Maybe you can fire off a message to Haley if you are. Are you seeing it, Haley? Um, it's actually taking a second on mine. I haven't seen it yet, but. Um, okay. Uh, it looks like we have a few people that say that they see it. So um, let's see here. Maybe it's just my end. Oh, here we go. Okay, I guess it was just a delay on my end, but I can see everything and it looks like other people are writing that they can, so we're okay. good to go. Great. All right, well, welcome everyone. And thank you for joining us today. I'm really excited to show you the new version 2.0 of Sharpen AI. First of all, I do wanna wish everyone good health amidst this uh, pandemic we are all facing. And I'm sure many of you like me, are self-quarantined and practicing social distancing. And I like to look at the upside of this, and that is we have an opportunity to work on our photography, like Haley said. And a webinar is a great way to make use of some of that extra time that some of us have in this situation. Anyway, today's webinar is, is about sharpening your skills with Sharpen AI, uh, version two. And in addition to a speed increase, there are a couple really useful new capabilities in this version. I'll show you some different ways to use this with various types of images. 
uh, I just kind of want to mention that that uh, something I realize is that Topaz is is an innovator here. I first started using one of their plugins called InFocus about nine years ago, and I still remember um, Albert's video on it. It was actually a really good video. Um, Albert's the the founder, I believe, of Topaz. Anyway, um, that was the precursor to Sharpen AI, and I remember back then it blew me away because up to that point, if your image was out of focus, there was nothing to be done but throw it away or delete it. And now almost a decade later or so, I'm blown away again by what this latest version can do. So um, before we get going, as always, I want to remind everyone about my educational resources, many of which are free, and this includes articles and reviews and short videos and my newsletter and archives of these webinars that I do. And under normal times, Haley mentioned this, is my workshop schedule. However, we have a special situation now. So once everyone is able to travel and socialize again, I'll post new workshops. In the meantime, you can look at my past workshops to get an idea of what I'll be offering in the future uh, when we're all able to travel again. Uh, the best way to take advantage of all these resources here, I'll show you, um, is to sign up on my email list. And let me just, all right. I just wanted to show you what it looks like. So this is just a page from my website and every page has this on the left. All I need is an email address and first name and make sure you select a preference, either photo news or fine art news or both. If you don't pick one or both of those, you won't get anything. So before, before I actually get into images, I just wanna go through a couple basic things about Sharpen AI. And by the way, these um, slides that I'm showing you here with um, that kind of show a workflow and some of the options and various things, if you sign when you sign up on my or if you sign up on my email list, uh, you'll be sent a link automatically to download all of these. So I generally go through these kind of quick and today won't be any exception. But when you sign up on the email list, you can download a PDF of all of them and, and look at it at your leisure. Plus, this webinar will be archived, so you can look at it that way, too. Um, if you are already on my email list, just fire me off an email and say, sharpen guide or something like that in the subject, and I will send you the link so that you can download it, too, if you're already on the email list. Anyway, um, if you didn't have time to read this, this just shows the different purposes of sharpen AI. Um, the first one, it does do sh overall image sharpening for images that are already in focus, but really the, the beauty of the program is the stabilize and focus models, which allow you to take an image that's out of focus and make it in focus. It, 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 to me, it still seems like magic. And then down here, the batch processing and selective sharpening are two of the major features in this upgrade. Um, and there's different starting points for this. Um, I'm putting this comparison up here because I often get asked, um, hey, Joel, there's sharpening in Sharpen AI. There's also sharpening in um, Denoise AI with AI Clear. Which one do I use? The, the bottom line on all of this is it's, it's personal preference and image dependent because I've done a lot of testing between the general sharpening and Sharpen AI and the AI Clear. So my approach on this is that look at what the program is intended to do and that's the easy way to figure it out so sharpen ai is mainly for well i think the best part of it is fixing focus or fixing motion blur and you can do the overall sharpening so if you don't happen to own denoise ai or you just want to simplify your workflow uh, and just use sharpen ai certainly you can do your sharpening with that denoise of course is for eliminating noise and when you use ai clear it will also eliminate noise and i do that on almost every image so you can use it standalone or plug-in these are some of the options the standalone allows you to use the batch mode uh, you can launch from on one lightroom luminar uh, photoshop and and that gives you these various options so here's here's my workflow and the um, don't let the arrows uh, throw you off. It's actually pretty simple. So starting with your image processor, which might be Lightroom or On One or whatever you happen to use, I generally recommend RAW. That's why I have the little asterisk. 
nothing wrong with using JPEGs if, if you have a, a need for that or you prefer that. Uh, the idea there is that your camera is doing the processing. So if you're shooting JPEGs, we're assuming that you've already nailed the exposure and the focus, um, or maybe not the focus, but at least the exposure. So that's why I don't have exposure balancing there. Um, I generally convert it to a TIFF before I bring it into any other program. Now, this exposure balancing here, you know what I'm going to do? Well, anyway, the exposure balancing I put on there because if you have to do big exposure adjustments, that's where RAW really comes in handy because it has such a huge dynamic range. And then you'll either go into the sharpen mode here or when you get down to here, if you have focus issues, you're going to be using the focus or stabilize modes. So now let's look at some real images here. Let's see, we'll start, we'll start an on one here. And what I'm going to do, let me, um, I'm going to turn on my little cursor highlighter so you can see things easier. So the first, uh, let's see, the first image I want to do, this is a really simple portrait of an elk in the rain. Um, this is a cow elk, cow just meaning female for elk, you call them cows and bulls. And I chose it because I think it's representative of what happens often when shooting wildlife, or for that matter, I guess pets or people. And that is either because of the animal moving or focusing on the wrong plane. Here, let me zoom in. Um, the eyes just aren't sharp. Or in this case, here I'll zoom in even more. All right, I'm really zoomed in now more than I more than I need to be, but it you can see very clearly now that the eyes and in fact the whole face are not in focus. So even though I had a relatively high shutter speed, I think there's there's slight movement and that's where the blur is. So there's there's different reasons for blurriness. One is that you you or your autofocus doesn't focus in the right place. The other is either your motion, your movement or movement of your subject or both, and that's motion blur, and AI, sharpen AI can fix either one of those. So there, here's the reason, I'm just gonna show you, let me move it down here. So the reason I think it's partially due to motion is if you look over on the left of the screen, this fur is relatively sharp, and, and look at the neck. It's not sharp on one side and it is sharp on the other, and what happened is, um, this elk, she turned around, she whipped her head around and I fired the shutter right when she whipped it around. So I think it could be a combination, but it's probably motion blur. So I'll keep that in mind when I, when I process it. So what I'm going to do to hop into Sharpen AI, there's two ways to do it. And it's the same in On1 and Lightroom. Uh, Luminar, I guess, is a little different. Uh, obviously, I don't have time to show every single program, but I'll try to show at least a couple. So you can right click. And when I right click, I get this menu here. And if you look down at the bottom here, um, there's Sharpen AI. It more or less puts it in alphabetical order. Now, if you happen to have on one and you're not, um, you're not seeing that menu here, I'll show you another way to do it is you can go up to photo. Uh, wait, I think it's, I think it's photo on this one. Oh, file menu, sorry. Uh, anyway, here's that list again. So if you don't see it in this list, you just go to send to other application. That's also the case if you do the right click, send to other application. And once you invoke uh, Sharpen AI or whatever it is, um, it'll appear in this list. So I already have it in the list. I'm gonna to go to Sharpen AI. Um, I always recommend, or generally anyway, editing a copy so that you're not editing your original image. This is more important when you're going from a processor light on one or Lightroom, because what's going to happen is when I save off the image, it will overwrite it. So that's why I'm selecting a copy here. Now, if you're in Photoshop, you can create a new layer and you're not going to overwrite your original. So it's just a different approach to the same idea. Now, I'm just going to do a quick run through of the interface. Right over on the upper right here, I'm using this, so this is the navigator, and I can I can move around on the image with that. I'm trying to take into account the delay you guys are probably seeing with this over the internet. So up on top, uh, there are a few tools on the right, and most of these have to do with viewing. 
The only exception is the masking right here, and I will show you how to use that when we get into some images a little further along. Uh, the original just toggles back and forth. You can also use uh, between your original and your, your preview image, and you can use the space bar as a shortcut for that. And the view image has a couple different ways to look at it, single view, split view, um, side by side. That's just a personal preference thing. Now, when we get over to the right here are the main tools of this thing. You'll notice right here, this auto update preview, I have that unchecked. I believe it defaults to being checked. I like to leave it unchecked, mainly because every time you move around on the screen or change a setting, it's gonna auto update. And then you have to wait a few seconds for it to recycle or to, to generate the preview. So I, I choose to do it manually with this update. Again, these are all personal preferences. Now the model here is the type of sharpening. I discussed this a little bit already. So sharpen is an overall sharpen, stabilize is for motion blur, and focus is when your plane of focus is out. Now I will say that even if you have motion blur, there may be occasions where the focus works better for you and vice versa. Down here, the mode, I usually start out on auto just to test things out, but you can go to manual. And when you go to manual, as you can see, you have sliders here for your adjustments. In the lower right, this button um, will change depending on, <clears throat> excuse me, on what you're doing and depending on how you invoke Sharpen AI. If it's standalone um, or you're in Photoshop, it'll just be contextual. So it'll either, it might say apply here instead of save image. And you'll see that as we go along. On the bottom, this just shows your parameters for that image. Now you won't see this bar in Photoshop. You'll see it when you invoke from another program or in the standalone mode. So again, Sharpen AI knows how you're going into it and it just gives you the information that you need for that purpose. So all that said, I'm going to um, start with stabilize um, because I'm pretty sure that this is a motion blur situation and I'm gonna put it on auto and what I'll do is I'll go, let's see, let's do a split view here. And when I do that, you see it's generating the preview in the middle. And the first time you do it, it starts out slowly and then you can see it really speeds up. And I've timed this uh, preview and how long it takes. And depending on whether you've run it previously or not, and of course the speed of your computer, mine is not a terribly fast computer, but I average somewhere between usually eight and 15 seconds to generate this preview, right? So you can see, hopefully about now um, on your screens, um, a pretty dramatic difference between the left and the right. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to the single view so you can see the whole thing sharpened. And hopefully you can see that now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the space bar and It'll probably take a few seconds, so I'm guessing somewhere about now you'll be seeing the original image, which is um, obviously a lot blurrier. I'm letting go of the space bar now, and I'm guessing right about now you're seeing it on your screen. I'm, I'm trying to allow for these delays here so you guys can see this. Now, looking at this, the eyes look really good, and that's the most important thing when you're shooting an animal or a person. If everything else is out of focus and the eyes are in focus, then we as humans, we perceive it as being in focus. So that's the important part, but you'll notice that her nose and her whole face and everything popped in. Now, in if you look in here, I, I just wanna give you guys a fair warning about magnification. If you look in here on, the, on this side and, and a little bit on this side, the fur looks kind of crunchy. Uh, yes, that's my technical term is crunchy. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if it looks a little crunchy, don't be too worried when you're looking at it with this giant magnification. And I want to point out too that Sharpen AI basically magnifies a lot so that you can see details. So it says 100% up here, but if you, if you do this same magnification so you get the same size on your screen in say Photoshop or um, Lightroom or anything that uses the Adobe standard for magnification, um, this you'd have to go to 200% to see it like this. And so you do have to keep that in mind when you're looking at things like 
this this crunchiness and sort of overprocessed look. Um, that's because we're looking at it so large. I am gonna um, take this. So really, this is all we have to do. I'm just showing you the easiest image first. We're gonna go to more complex ones, but um, magically, I basically transformed this. So now I would click Save Image, and what's going to happen is it'll process the image and it'll drop it back into Lightroom. Uh, sorry, on one, I guess, is where we started on this. You can see the progress bar up here. So rather than make you guys wait for processing all these images, what I did is right before the webinar today, I went through and processed everything. Um, and I'll try to reproduce it exactly the same way that I did it before so you can see the real results. So I'm just going to cancel out of here. And if you want to cancel out of the whole plug-in mode, uh, you go to the file menu up on the upper left here, you see accept and cancel. If I was in standalone, it would be save as and open images and things like that. So that again, it's contextual. But I'm just going to say cancel. And no, I'm not going to save it because I already processed this and I just want to show you a comparison. So this is, this is it processed. And now we're looking at 100%. And even at 100%, um, you can probably see a pretty dramatic difference between left and right. And what's really cool is it knows where the detail is. So it didn't it didn't do anything funky to my background. Um, I can still see the, the little streaks of rain. I still have a nice blurred background, which makes my elk stand out. And now her eyes are well in focus. And let me just zoom in a little more. Um, and you know, let me see if I can move this down a little bit. And now you can see it a little clearer and, and at 100% in on one, you can see enough of it that you can see the whole thing got nice and sharp. And I will mention that I did start out, most of the images I'm showing you today, I started out in AI clear, just because I run that on most of my images. And I especially am careful to do it um, before using Sharpen AI if there's noise in the image. You want to do your noise reduction first. Otherwise, you may end up sharpening noise. Uh, the program is pretty intelligent. It does it, it often will distinguish noise from other things, but to be on the safe side, I recommend running a uh, denoise if you have a noisy image. This one was slightly noisy. It's ISO 4000, um, but this way I've got a nice clean sharpened image. All right, so um, there you are, voila, one click, and to me it's like magic. I mean this <laughs> this program just keeps amazing me. All right, I want to go, now let's do, uh, I'll do one from Lightroom just so you can see, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm trying to, to save my voice so I can make it through the webinar here. So let's do a, a people person and we'll get a little more involved. So as you can see from my film strip down on the bottom, I, I did a, a whole series of images of my daughter. I was shooting these very quickly because she kept changing her expressions and her body language and all that. She was just messing around. And um, so what I what I want to point out here, I'm going to magnify this a little bit. I was using what is called the IAF, the eye autofocus on my camera. I happen to use Sony's for this series. Sony is alleged to have the best eye autofocus. Uh, there are also other good ones out there, but the reason I mention this is because even though they have a really good eye autofocus, for one thing, it works way better on people than on animals. For instance, the elk picture, I was also using it, but the animal one at best has a 50% sec success rate. Um, but here, what I'm going to do is I'll go to the next one, and you can see that one, her eyes are razor sharp, so it was working there. Um, it worked on this one, but for some reason, when I went to vertical, it's not as sharp. And let me, I'll zoom in even more. So it's clearly, this is a, a plane of focus issue. So it focused in the wrong position. Um, even though I was using the eye autofocus, uh, you can see her hair is razor sharp and this part of her eyebrow. But I am using a slight telephoto, an 85 millimeter lens, you can see in the upper right here, and, I, and, and I'm shooting at f2.8 here, um, which is very shallow depth of field. So clearly, even though there's so little distance between her eyebrow and her eye, um, her eyes are definitely out of focus and it just kind of ruins the whole portrait. 
So I happen to like this expression. I don't want to throw it out. So sharpen AI to the rescue, or at least I hope so. Uh, and I'll show you how I did it. So I'm going to use some other tools. So this one will be a little bit more involved. So now we're in Lightroom, and I know many of you use Lightroom. So it's the same thing. I can right click. I get a little different looking menu than I did in on one. I have to go to a sub menu, which is the edit in. And now I have my, my list here. I can also go up to the photo menu. The edit in menu is also here and it's the same list. Now, one thing you'll notice is I have denoise and sharpen AI at the top because I use those fairly frequently. And the way I got them to appear at the top is just a little Lightroom trick in the preferences and in the, um, I think it's called, uh, here, let's look. If you go into the preferences, oh, it's external editing, here it is. So all you do is you go to your external editor, you go down to the one that you want to rename, and, and you once you pick that, you can go to rename preset, and then if you put that little tilde symbol in the front of it, then it will appear at the top of your list. I'm going to cancel out of here, but that's, I've showed that shortcut before, but it's a, it's a useful one. So I'm going to go to my edit in. I'm going to go into sharpen AI. And yes, I want to do a copy here. And I click on edit, and it's going to do the same thing it did from on one. And it's going to just drop me into this. Now here, um, instead of stabilize, um, I don't have a motion blur issue. I'm going to use the focus. And again, I'll try it on auto. And I encourage you to try, you know, with different images. If you don't like the look you get with one model, then try the other. Because it really, even though they they technically are made for certain situations, sometimes a, a motion blur image just looks better with focus or vice versa. Anyway, what I'll do is um, hit the update button here. And what I'm going to do once I get, you can see again, the preview thing starts out kind of slow and then it speeds up. But once I see what the sharpening looks like, I think you'll be a little aghast at what you see here, because I know what's coming. I did this one before. Anyway, um, we're going to be using the selective, the selective sharpening with the, that masking brush in the upper right. So I'm going to wait until you guys can see this. I'm guessing you're seeing it now, and, and I know your first impression is this looks horrible. And you're right on every, virtually the whole thing except the eye. So, it, and remember, we're looking at a very enlarged image. So this 100% in Sharpen AI, because it magnifies more, um, is the equivalent of about 200% in Photoshop or Lightroom or On One or whatever. So um, if you can ignore the rest of this, horrible looking skin where it over sharpened, the eyes really aren't bad. And so what I'm going to do is just brush that in. So I'm going to go up to the masking and now you'll see some new tools. So when I click on masking, now first of all, you see it goes back to the original file, which is soft. You'll, you'll see also that my cursor has turned into a brush and ignore the blue circle. That's just my, my cursor thing but the brushes are the two concentric circles. The outer, it's a standard brush. The outer one is um, the softness or the, you know, where it tapers off, the radius. And you'll notice all those tools are down here. So I could choose between hide and show, um, edge aware if I want to define edges, and I'll, I'll try to show you how that works. Uh, the opacity, that's, you know, on almost any brush and any software. And the overlay, I'll show you in just a second. Now, what I want to point out is over on the right here is a thumbnail of the mask. Right now, it's blank. As soon as I start brushing, you will see um, that it that it changes to black. So, because um, black conceals and white reveals. So, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna brush in her eye here, okay? And that's what this overlay thing is. If I uncheck that. Um, it takes away that red overlay. Um, until I'm done brushing it in, I like to see the overlay. Now I'm going to hit my little magnifier here. If you look in the lower right, um, you can see there's a white patch where I brushed in the eye. 
Okay, so for the other eye, I think what I'll do is I'll go to the edge aware. And now you notice that the softness changes to threshold. When I'm using edge aware, I like to, whoops, I like to bring that up all the way. And the reason I do that, oh, I guess that radius is good. The reason I do that is the difference between the two circles here, let me, I'm gonna get rid of my, my blue highlighter there. Let's see, we are in Sherpen AI, okay. So what you do is you want to put your edges between the two circles. So that's what defines the edges. And I really don't need the edge aware here, but I just want to show you how it works. Now watch when I let go of this, it kind of shrink wraps. And let me go to the magnifier here. So can you see how on this eye, it actually saw the eyelashes and it selected those. Whereas if you look down here, it just kind of tapers off the, the red overlay. And you can see it's a little more defined on the top of her eye there too. So I don't really need it here. I just wanted to show you how it works. But the one thing I am going to use, I'll turn off the edge aware right now, is the opacity. Because remember, the, the, the rest of the face just looked way, way, way over processed. However, I'd like to bring a little texture back into her lips and maybe a little in the eyebrows. So what I'm going to do is make use of the opacity. I'm going to bring that down pretty low, I'll, I'll bring it down to about 20%. So it's just gonna be a very, very slight um, sharpening. So when I let go of this, we have a, a, a very light red mask because I'm only at 20%. So it's on red lips, you can hardly even see it. And let's see, I'll let's see, I'm gonna bring the radius down on my brush a little bit. And I'm just going to go across her eyebrows a little bit, and and again we're at we're at uh, oh wait I somehow got on edge aware that might be a bug actually um, it doesn't seem to want to be doing the oh my opacity got to zero sorry about that all right I'm going to put the opacity back to 20% I'll go back and do the eyebrows here and. Hopefully it did those. I can't, I don't really see it on the mask. I know it's hard. Oh yeah, I, I guess I do see it a little bit. So you can definitely see the mouth where it's light gray there and a little bit where the eyebrows are, but we're looking at a thumbnail, so it's kind of hard to see. But what I can do is I can turn off this overlay and then hit the update button here. And we're gonna have to go through our little, um, our little processor, if it comes up here, just move move her around a little bit, and I'll hit update. There's our processor, and it should go a little faster because we've already run it once. And when the processing is done here, it should just bring up the eyes and, to a lesser extent, her lips and her eyebrows. So here we're using masking, opacity, edge aware. So I'm trying to show you all the all the little tricks with this masking brush that you can use. And this is so nice, there you go. And and remember, again, we're looking at a very highly magnified um, image here. And when I drop back into Lightroom, I can show you a comparison, but let me, I'll click on the original here. I'll give it a few seconds so you guys can see it on your end. And hopefully you're seeing it now. There's the softened image I'm gonna let go right now. And that goes back to the sharpened image and hopefully by now you're seeing it. And it, it, the, the lips and the eye, eyebrows will be a little easier to see in the AB, but the eyes are very obvious. And so the next thing you do after you've been using the mask is over on the lower right here, and um, you wanna say apply mask first, and then it changes to save image, and you can save the image, and it's going to process it and apply it. And again, I don't want, Want, to, want you guys to have to wait 30 seconds or a minute here for each image. So I will cancel out and I'll show you the one that I processed with the same parameters um, right before the webinar. And I need to cancel out of the whole thing so that I can go back in to Lightroom. So um, let's see, there's our original and let me find the one I processed before. I believe this is it right here. And let me, first let's look at this at 
Okay, so hopefully you have those up on your screen now. On the left is our blurry one. And if, and if you look at the right, now here's, part of this is psychological and, and it's part of visual design. And that is um, our eyes naturally go to the to um, areas that are in focus before out of focus. And if you look at the left, your eye just kind of wanders. Try this, you know, in front of your monitors there. Um, glancing back and forth, your eye just kind of wanders around here. Here, the eyes are razor sharp. That's right where you go. And, and so because they're sharp and we're looking at a person, and that's exactly what I want. And if you look between the left and the right on the lips and the eyebrows, and here I'll enlarge it more so you can see it. So now it's easier to see the, the lips. We just did that at 20% opacity. And the eyebrows might be hard for you guys to see over the internet, but they're just ever so slightly sharper. Um, I might have been better off, say, using 30%, but really the important part are the eyes and the eyelashes here, which are nice and razor sharp. So voila. Now we'll go to a more complex image and a different type of image. So let me uh, let me bring up my film strip here. All right. And I will go to, all right, so here's a landscape image. I shot this at Oregon Pipe National Monument. It's part of the Sonoran Desert on the border of Mexico. This is on the US side. And I have a difficult situation here. Let me, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see. Well, anyway, what I have is I have this, I shot this with a 24 millimeter lens, so fairly wide. Um, I've got flowers very close in the foreground, and I, I'm trying to hold the focus all the way back to infinity. So basically a nearly impossible task. And I also, the other thing that makes it more difficult, and I'll zoom in on this so you can see it, is that I have, hopefully you can, I'm, 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 my pause is waiting for you guys to be able to see it on your end. So. I have varying degrees of blurriness too, all right? So these flowers are reasonably sharp. These have sun flare coming in, so there's veiling flare. They're a little bit unsharp. These are way unsharp. And then the rest of the image is very sharp. Now, one of the cool things about Sharpen AI is if stuff is already sharp, it pretty much leaves it alone. It might sharpen it ever so slightly like a capture sharpening type thing, but it's really pretty intelligent. So. Um, you do run into some fluky things like I did with the skin on, on the photo of my daughter, but that's where that selective comes in too. So what I'm going to do here, let's, um, I'm going to, I'm going to do this one from Photoshop. So uh, I, that way we can show a variety of ways to do this. And one of the reasons I want to do this in Photoshop is because I am going to use a multi-pass workflow with this. So we're going to the the next level here in complexity and there we go it took a little while to pop it into photoshop there <clears throat> so there's our image now the reason um the reason i want to do it in photoshop is because i can do it in layers and this is really good for multi-pass and i'll show you what that means in just a minute so if you go here you know what let me let me go back to my highlighter so you guys can see my cursor easier. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the lower right here. I'm gonna click on this background image. I'm gonna drag and drop it to the to the little um, uh, folded page there, and that makes a copy. The other way you can do it is in the layer menu, and you can say duplicate layer. So uh, like with many things in Photoshop, there's lots of different ways to do it. I'm gonna double click on here, and I'm gonna write sharpen AI, and I'll call this first pass. I like to label these so that I, when I go back to this image and I see these layers, I know what I did on each one. And I can even go back in if I want later and, and you know, change the name to show the parameters I used or whatever. So you can get, it's okay to get specific here if you think you might need to use that information later on. So now to go into Sharpen AI from here, I go up to Filter. Go down to Topaz Labs, it's an alphabetical order. I go down to Sharpen AI, and it will drop me into Sharpen AI. Notice in the lower right it says apply now instead of save, and there and there isn't that strip on the bottom because we're in Photoshop and we're dealing with layers. 
So uh, let me bring this up a little bit so we can sort of see the range of sharpness on these flowers. And this one, I am going to use the focus mode to start. And I'll put it on auto and I'm gonna hit update. And we get our little generating preview thing here. Now, what I mean by multi-pass is I, I have different degrees of sharpness. And I could try using the opacity and trying to guess how much I need and all that, but it's gonna be more efficient for me to sharpen the whole thing and the other and, and then sharpen this area more on another pass. So I'll create another layer for that and I'll show you how I do that in just a second here. And the other reason for doing that instead of just trying to use opacity is that I can I can double the amount of sharpening um, on these down here, which are less sharp than these. So now here, let's uh, just to be different, let's go to the split view. And let me move this over. Oops. Okay, I'm gonna have to update now. So the split view is that little slider thing. I, I accidentally moved the image instead of the slider. So we're gonna have to wait another 10 or 15 seconds here so that you can see the difference um, in the in the sharpening between the left and the right. But what I'm what I'm doing is um, I'm sharpening the whole thing. I'm gonna save this back into Photoshop and then I'm gonna come back in. I'm gonna duplicate that layer, come back in and then sharpen these down here, which are more out of focus even more. So now you can see um, pretty dramatic difference here. Let's move this over, say here. So you can see a pretty dramatic difference say in these flowers here versus this side here. Um, I'll hit apply just to show you it's gonna do the same thing, the processing, but because I don't want you to have to wait, I'll cancel out of that. I'm gonna cancel out of this and I'm gonna to go to the one here where I just applied the first pass, okay? So, and, and I'm at 200% right now. So if you look, you know, these are all nice and sharp all through here. I still have a little bit of that veiling flare and I like that. I don't necessarily want to be all razor sharp because if I move up on the image, you can see these sun rays are hitting those. So I kind of like that veiling flare that the light is softening that a little bit. So I'm not going to be too concerned with getting every single petal razor sharp. Um, I want to keep the feel of the image. The problem I have is down here in the lower left where those are significantly less sharp. So what I'm going to do is go in the lower right, duplicate the image, and then I can change the name and we'll call this uh, second pass. And then I would go up to the filter menu again, go back into sharpen AI. And so we're sharpening the sharpened image. Okay, so we already did our first pass. We're using that as the basis for our next pass. I'm just going to go to the single view here and I'll bring it down here. Let's see. Well, I want you to be able to see these really out of focus ones. So I'll use the focus again. And instead of auto, I'm going to go to manual so I can show you how to use that. And I really, these are pretty far out. So I am going to crank the sharpening all the way up. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to get the maximum amount of sharpening I can on these flowers. Now it may end up over sharpening the rest. We'll have to see. Sharpen AI is intelligent. It will see this as sharp, so it shouldn't sharpen it quite as much, but I'm gonna hit, oops, sorry, I don't want the apply yet. I wanna hit the update button because I just wanna update my preview. So again, we're starting out fresh with a new image here. This starts out a little bit slow and then it starts whipping through there. So while that's going, I'm gonna take a sip of water so that you can still hear me. And then my next step here is I'm gonna combine the second pass with that sharpening brush. So, all right, hopefully by now you've seen it process. I'm gonna hold down the space bar to show you the before. And remember, we're, we're mainly looking at down here. The rest of this is pretty sharp already. I'll let go of the space bar now. 
and now you should be able to see it. And you can see it's gotten a lot sharper. Um, I'm seeing a tiny bit of artifacts. I'm not going to worry about it too much because, again, we're at super magnification here. I'm going to hit the mask. I'm going to go and just, I'm going to bring my brush size down a little bit. And you see it goes back to the original image, so I can see what's blurry. I'm just going to go through here and really only brush over those areas that I want and focus. Now you'll notice I have um, some other stuff down here. I don't want that to get too prominent. So I'm just, I'm, I'm being very, very selective about, about what I'm gonna sharpen here. Um, I suppose I could go down here a little bit. I'm gonna move it all the way down to just get some of this stuff down here too, even though that's really dark. All right, so at this point, I want to apply mask. You can see our mask right there down in the lower right here. Hit apply mask and then hit apply. It's gonna process that layer. And again, um, I don't want you guys to have to wait 30 seconds to a minute or whatever it takes to process. So I'm gonna cancel out of that. And what I'm gonna do is go to my multi-pass one here and this is where I have all the layers, which I process using the same, wait, that's not the right one. Oh, maybe I don't have it, let's see. There's multi-pass. No, this should be the right one. All right, so let me magnify this. Sorry, wrong thing. We're at 100%. Let me magnify this more. I'm going to go up to 200%. All right. So there we are. So now we have a nice balance of focus. I'll move it over and I'll, and I'll hold still here because it's probably taken a few seconds on your end. But you can see I brushed in that sharpness and now the sharpness is nice and balanced. And, and this is just amazing because if we, here, I'm gonna undo this. I'm gonna, in the lower right here, if you check those eyeballs, that turns off those layers. And look at the difference. So that's where we started. And I'm gonna click on this. And that's where we ended up. So pretty darn amazing. I'll go back here into Lightroom and let me, uh, I can do an AB here, so you can just see the comparison. And so there we are on the left, from a little out of focus to way out of focus, and on the right, we have nice balance and focus. Totally amazing, totally amazing. Okay, so I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions. Um, I'll turn it over to Haley so we can address some okay. of those questions. Sure, um, so a couple frequent ones that I saw popping up. Um, a few people wanted to know, do you recommend cropping before or after sharpening? Okay, in general, I recommend cropping first, uh, regardless of how you're going to process the image. And the reason is that if you have superfluous things in your image, you, you're not going to have them there anyway, ultimately, and they will influence what you see. So let's say you have a landscape that has too much sky in it and that sky might not even be a blue sky it might be white so ultimately you're going to crop most of it out and the problem is um, if you have all that sky in there when you're when you're dealing with your image it's going to influence how you adjust brightness it'll it might even influence um, I don't know how, how it's going to influence specifically sharpen AI but um, all that's going to happen is let's say you have a blue sky it, it, if it's noisy and you don't run denoise first, you might see that. Anyway, it's just in the, in the long run, it's better. You don't have to do precise cropping. What I usually recommend is do a rough crop because you might change your mind after you process the image. But try to try to get close anyway, and then you'll have a better basis for judging whatever it is you're going to do, whether it's sharpening or whether it's um, exposure adjustment or whatever. So I hope that helps. That's a really good point. Um... And it kind of leads into this next question. Um, we had a, several people wondering when to use Sharpen in a workflow, meaning um, before denoise, before AI clear, before 
Lightroom adjustments, Photoshop adjustments, and so on. What what do you recommend? Excellent question. And if you download my <laughs> my slides here, I actually address that. Can you guys still see my screen? Are you seeing that, Haley? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, so so what um, you can see right up here, other than exposure balancing, which you want to do while it's still in raw. Um, the very first step really is if you have noise is to do noise reduction first so on the left hand side here this is assuming that you, your image is already clean and you don't need to do anything to it except go into sharpening and there you have to decide whether or not you have focus issues and if you don't you're going to go straight down to starting to add depth and other adjustments and all your creative processing um, over on the right is a situation where you might have noise in your image and i run if you if you guys want to go onto my website, I have the webinars archived and so does Topaz on their site. And if you didn't see my Denoise AI webinar, take a look at that. But what I, I run AI clear on almost all my images. If it's an image that requires really detailed noise reduction or elimination, then then I might use the Denoise model. But AI clear is one of the models in there. It's it's really good, it's fast. And I do it on almost all my images, and especially if they have noise, you definitely want to do that before you bring it down to sharpen AI, because you're just you're, you're adding the potential for sharpen AI is very intelligent, but occasionally it it can see noise as detail and it might sharpen it. So you're just um, giving yourself a cleaner slate, so to speak, if you do noise reduction first. So I hope that answers the question. If I misunderstood it, I'll I'll um, address it more. Is that kind of what you were asking? Yeah, um, I think that that solved it up. And for the um, webinar that you mentioned that you previously did for us, that is available on our YouTube page. Um, so it's it's actually the top video uh, whenever you go on there, and it's called uh, Less Noise, More Detail, I believe. So um, that can clear up some of those um, more specific denoise AI clear uh, questions for people. Um, so another question that I thought was really interesting, um, what percentage zoom do you recommend to evaluate for sharpness? Uh, that is a superb question. I love it. So it's a tricky one. <laughs> so what I would say, denoise, as far as I can tell, and, and I haven't, um, I don't know, one of these days I'm going to pick the brain of one of your programmers, Haley, and, and find <laughs> out how they come up with it. But just from practical experience, Dino, I'm sorry, Sharpen AI magnifies a lot for a given percentage. So right. Adobe has a, has a standard, and, and right now you're looking at two to one. So you're looking at 200%, all right? I just clicked it and changed it to one to one, which is 100%. Now you might recall when I had this same image in Sharpen AI, it looked a lot more like the 200% in Lightroom. So there's not an easy answer, but if you're in Lightroom, Photoshop, On One, Luminar, and I haven't tested too many others, those are those will give you the, about the same magnification at 100%. So for noise reduction, you can use Topaz as 100%, and I would use at least 100% for noise reduction. Same thing with Sharpen AI. Use their 100%. Topaz is 100%, and they purposely, or at least appears to me anyway, they purposely magnify more because you're dealing with detail. Just keep in mind, like I mentioned earlier in the webinar, that when you're looking, like we started with the elk or, or the um, picture of my daughter really zoomed in, keep in mind that you're looking at an exaggerated view, and that's okay when you're trying to determine noise and detail, but if you're going to make a print, here's my recommendation. 100% is more detail than you're ever going to see in a print, even scrutinizing it. So when I want to know about how the print will look when I'm looking at a monitor, and of course it's not a direct comparison, I'll look at it at 50%. So I might do some really fine adjustments at 100%, but then before I print it, I make sure to look at it at 50%, which I think, and I'm talking 50% in Photoshop, Lightroom, etc. Um, I look at it at 50%. Um, as an indication of how a large print will look when it's scrutinized. So that means if someone walks up to it to look at detail, that 50%. And that's just an approximation. 
So you kind of have to figure that out for your own workflow, but that's at least the best guideline I can give you. And that's an excellent answer. We had a lot of print folks out there that seemed to want to, wanted to know that. So, um, okay. I think we have a few minutes left um, for me to put up some of the info um, that you guys have wanted to know about the discount code and all of that. Um, so let me get that up for you guys. And again, if, if we didn't have time to get to some of your questions today, um, I'm gonna show you some info on how you can reach out to us. Okay, it should be up now um, for you guys to see this. So the discount code is gonna be JoelWeb0320, and that's gonna be 20% off store-wide. So that applies to your purchase or a singular product, that applies to our bundles. Um, it applies to anything that's currently on sale, like Sharpen and our utility bundle. Um, so this code is gonna expire, um, or it's gonna run through April 14th, um, and, um, just a reminder that Sharpen is only on sale through this Friday, April 3rd for $59.99. So that's down from the usual $79.99. Um, and this code does work additionally on top of that, but just make sure to take advantage of your best possible savings by um, through this Friday. So um, you can reach out to Joel um, at info at joelwolfson.com. And you can also follow him on his website, joelwolfson.com. Um, if you have any other questions for us, you can find our help center at topazlabs.com slash help. And uh, we also have some more info on our Sharpen page, which is topazlabs.com slash sharpen dash AI. Joel, thank you again for another stellar presentation. Oh, you're very welcome. And thank you all so much. And stay safe and stay healthy. And I hope we see you online again. I always love doing these webinars. And thank you all for attending. So we've recorded today's session. Um, it takes a little bit to download from GoToWebinars platform and then put up on our YouTube channel. But um, as soon as that's up, um, there's an automated email that'll go out with the direct link to this presentation. And it'll also recap the discount code and some other info here, the contact info and things like that. Um, all right, uh, well, I guess this wraps it up for today, but um, thank you all for joining and um, we hope to see you again soon. Stay safe. Bye, everybody.